So here we go. We have an entire class dedicated to these things. We are simply going to scratch the surface of what it is to talk about a differential equation. So a differential equation is any equation involving an independent variable. Now for us, usually that independent variable is going to be x. A dependent variable, for us, usually that dependent variable is going to be y. And any order derivative of the dependent variable. So we could be talking about things like y prime, y double prime, y triple prime, and so forth and so on. <clears throat> we'll also point out for good measure that the highest order derivative, highest order derivative present in the equation is called the order of the differential equation. For purposes of what we're doing in this video, we will likely be using either the abbreviation DE for differential equation, or we could also use diff EQ to represent a differential equation. So an example of a first order differential equation could be something like um, what we use for Newton's law of cooling. The rate at which the temperature of an object changes is proportional to the difference between the object's temperature and the temperature of the surroundings. We could also use the Malthusian growth model that says that the rate at which population changes is proportional to the size of the population. Because the highest order derivative present in either of these models is a first derivative, we would call this a first order differential equation. An example of a second order differential equation could be something like y double prime minus 5 times y prime plus 6y is equal to 30 times e to the 4x power. Very common second order differential equation that you'll solve once you get up to a class of that caliber. Now, if you wanted to go ridiculous and go with something that is a third order differential equation, we could just do something simple like saying that the third derivative of a function is equal to the first derivative of a function. So a couple things that would satisfy that, uh, exponentials, uh, constant functions, um, exponential decays, uh, well, very specific exponential functions, I suppose. <clears throat> So with that in mind, a solution of a differential equation is a function that, when it differentiated and plugged in, differentiated appropriately, and plugged in, plugged in to the differential equation causes the equation to become an identity. Now, please note the use of the indefinite article, a solution of a differential equation, not the solution or the only solution of a differential equation. Turns out that there can actually be lots of different individual solutions, and generally we look for the general solution. The general solution of a differential equation has as many unknown constants as 
as the order of the differential equation. Now, we're not going to prove it right this moment, but I think at the, that at the very least, a demonstration of what this actually means is an order. <laughs> order. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. So, for example, I would like to consider the second derivative of a function plus the original function is equal to zero. This is a second order differential equation. Highest derivative present, present is the second derivative. Now when we think of functions whose second derivative plus the original function is equal to zero, that would be like saying take two derivatives and you wind up with the negative of the original function. I can think of two in particular, which would be y is equal to the sine of x and y is equal to the cosine of x. Both of these individually would be solutions of this differential equation. We'll even refer to them as y1 and y2. This is due to the fact that the first derivative of the sine of x is equal to the cosine of x, and the second derivative would be equal to the negative sine of x. Plugging these in and adding negative sine of x plus sine of x would in fact give us zero. y2 prime would be negative sine of x, and y2 double prime would be the negative cosine of x. Once again, if I take the second derivative and add it to the original function, I will wind up with zero. Now it should also be pointed out that these two original sines and cosines could potentially have a coefficient and it would still satisfy the original equation. Now with that in mind, the general solution of this, and this is where linear algebra is going to come in really handy when you take the differential equations course, the general solution is known as a linear combination of these two functions. That is to say, multiply a constant times each of these, and you'll wind up with the general solution. Now it's not always the case that this is how you turn particular solutions, as they're called, into a general solution, but it does frequently happen that way. So, something to keep your eyes peeled for in the future.